Seeing my dad with his acting My chops. acting debut. <laughs> <laughs> so now my, maybe my son will give me a plug. He, maybe I'm ready. He know I'm ready. I need more practice. Without a script. Without a script. He knows I'm ready. He did his thing. He knows I'm ready. Did he say he kind of went in there yeah. unscripted and just, just flew? You know, but I don't see yeah. that being a problem for you. I feel like just kind of give you some guidance. You, but I'm just doing some shit right. I got, you know, I'm like, hey. You know, I ended up being in the video. Sound of brother up. I was shocked, you know, and appreciated being in there. And kind of. Sharing some of my unscripted mm-hmm. experience as well, but nah, I, I'm excited. I, I can wait. work. I can work with just getting credits for the first movie. <laughs> just, you know, I have a certain. You know, I gotta have a certain level. You know what? Size fine, but I really, but I really might have something for you. Like, how you do some voiceover work too? Okay with that? I'm cool. And just start with that. I don't know. I have a credit. But I feel like I got a credit. I have a credit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I commanded the presence yesterday, man. Like, yo, what you got to do? But no, I'm definitely anxious and excited to see how that project turns out. I think it's important. I don't know if we can share too much about it. Well, actually, he posted on Facebook. I didn't know. I was looking at oh, Yeah, he posted official. Well, basically, the project that we were on is um, about prostate cancer awareness. And, then, and it was a scene shot in the barbershop. You know, um, and it was it was pretty cool. We had a great time, man. So I'm not going to go forever deep into it. No, but I, I did like yeah. the idea of just, it was... Uh, one, educating people yeah. on prostate cancer and making sure you're getting checked out. And then two, um, kind of just almost tackling the idea of barbershop talk and maybe having that as a place of having some different conversations. Yeah, and, and I want I want to go back and have a show from there and get more guys and talk about some of the stuff because you know I think it's a great atmosphere. I did I, I had a good time yesterday, man. Like I said, it was my you know my debut because first I was kind of hesitant. You know, I was like, man, I really want to do tell. this. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? No, because sometimes you got to realize, man, that you just got skills. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody that thinks that I'm confident, they just, they like, just, they this just, this just is where I get it from. This, this, is, this is where I get that like, the yo, confidence you know, from. Right ready to roll? <laughs> no script. Made more lines up. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> but anyway, so joking aside, hey, Wayne, what's up, man? This is a, a topic that's very near and dear to me. And I'm going to tell you what stirred it up, and that's why I was glad you brought it up. Um, it was crazy because the shoot, it was a shooting on the bus stop. And a couple of them. And, well, no, this one in particular. Northeast, oh, 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 right? oh, no, Old Guys Avenue. Mm-hmm. And somebody took a still picture. So bodies are laying in the, in the street on the sidewalk, and the cops are doing the thing. And these three young dudes on their cell phone, like nothing happened. Mm. Now, they weren't a part of it, so let me make that clear. So you saw the picture. But just the fact that they were unmoved by what was unfolding around them. And obviously, they walked up afterwards. But it was almost, I don't know. I just, I was... I couldn't take my eyes off of them. How it was like business as usual. Uh, and I think that's another reason why I wanted to really kind of have yeah. the conversation tonight. 
because I think we're beginning to be a little bit desensitized to gun violence and like kind of that example of what you said, that image of man, where it's just people on their phones or they taking pictures, they taking videos. Like, uh, I don't even think if I was in that situation, I would have the presence of mind to be like, let me get my phone out and record. Well, I, I, and, I, and the thing about it was they weren't recording. I, they were just having the kind of, I know, so I'm just saying know that's, that's what some people do. If they were calling people, but just being unmoved that you, you just walked up in the gunshots, you know, they still, the, the, the shells on the ground, you know, they got the things you see on TV and, and, and bodies laying there and they just like, Hey, you know, and that was, you know, and for people who just signed on, we're talking about um, violence in our youth. And, and it's crazy because they're not, you know, and it's funny because even though the number of homicides are down, the number of youth homicides are up. Mm-hmm. And they're saying more youth die now for the first time in the history of this country. More youth die by gun violence than by automobile accidents. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that I was going to reference or say is that it's, gun violence is down in certain areas. Um, but I think we're seeing it a little bit more prevalent in our youth and in our kids where uh, I saw today, Devin, you were talking about that shooting in Northeast. Yeah. Uh, they actually found the four suspects. Three of them got arrested. Uh, and one is still out on the loose, 17 years old. The other people, 18 or whatever. Well, they were talking about the barbershop. Remember he was telling us in the barbershop yesterday before we, yeah, got, we got yeah. finished shooting. I just saw right another story yeah. where... Um, it was like in Marion, I want to say that's in Indiana or something like that. A 13 year old shot a 24 year old trying to rob him at but, a gas station. But the thing that amazes me is, and, and, and I'm going to step with some tools saying I really don't care, but we got politicians meeting today to, to make TikTok illegal. I, that's I'm like, is really that really what we're. I'm thinking myself, um, like, yo, I mean, I get it, but that's not the most pressing most pressing thing. Like, you won't ban automatic weapons, but you want to ban TikTok. You know, Come yeah, on, I'm man, gonna, give I'm me gonna, that. I'm going to say, you know, social media is certainly a factor in this nowadays as well. Like you hear stories of where that's kind of where it starts or originates for some kids. Like just kind of that, those conversations back and forth online and um, taking it to the yeah, next right. level or but the that, extreme. But of like now the, they think they're going to end somebody's life. But that's that. but that's 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 treating the symptom and not the cause. That's sure. part of it. So I'm saying I don't you, think that's the reason why are, they're banning TikTok. But I'm just saying but, it's but, certainly but that's, a part but of it. But my point is why why are you focusing on TikTok when we got gun? You know when you won't ban automatic? We know why. But I'm saying you you wasted the taxpayer dollars. You need to ban TikTok. We get or people or you won't ban automatic weapons. You won't even pass sensible gun laws. You know where you, there had to be a waiting period and maybe psychological profile. Because I always say this: if somebody needs to buy a gun right now and buy a hundred rounds of ammunition right now, something is wrong. Yeah, that you can't wait. You know what I mean, and that, that's a red flag. And and the point I'm saying is because you know gun violence is real and it's getting worse and worse. And I'm, I'm really starting to question: are the numbers really down, or is it highly reported? You know, because it seems like every week, man, man, every week, you know, every week, for, and it's just fell off. Yeah, we know we know Chicago, all other cities. Yeah, yeah, it's out of control. Different areas, and it's certainly something yeah. that's happening in a lot of our inner cities. Um, yeah. You know, in New York, they got the National Guard up there in the subways now, and because of some of the, yeah, because some of the violence that's in there. We're and I think it's behind. a matter of time, right? It's only they actually had uh, the National Guard. For the bus shooting in North Carolina, I mean, yeah. in um, Northeast. So, so let me throw this to Wayne and, and Gary. would put something in the chat box. So, so what do you think of some of the causes? I mean, I got plenty of stuff Ooh. to say. But okay. what do you think? All right. All right. So, yeah. if I'm being honest, and again, sometimes I still listen to some of the music, but it's really, I feel like rap music is a huge cause of why. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because you listen to some of your favorite artists yeah. and what are they only talking about now? It's only mm-hmm. two subjects. Drugs, killer. Yeah, those are the only thing. The thing is to pop up a, a Percocet and go, uh, what they call, do a drill. Yeah, and that's why I don't take it. It's a whole genre. It makes Percocet. it kind of like uh, desensitized but, to that feeling. And another thing people don't want to talk about is like game, like, and I don't want to get on video game creators and things like that, but Certain games like uh, the Grand Theft Autos of the world, it's not solely on them. You should be able to separate realism and like uh, video games, but at the same time, a lot of kids get desensitized to a lot of different uh, things like that because you could go on and just you know take someone's life. Uh, when you learn that when yeah. you're younger, you don't realize the real consequences. They kind of treat it like a Grand Theft Auto, like oh, I'll just get out of jail and 
I'll be all right. Gary yeah. says extreme gun violence is a reflection of our deteriorating society. society. And I, I agree with that. But I mean, and, and I got tons to say because I'm in school working with these kids, but I just found myself, you know, I'm intrigued by it because, you know, your mom looks at a lot of TV. She looks at a lot of old black and white Are TV. You watch, oh, yeah. No, so, so what I'm getting at is, you know, look, no, but looking at it now, those shows were just as violent. Yeah. yeah. If you look at the, you know, the cop they, shows, they yeah. be saying some Long stuff. Ball, I'm like, whoa. Long Long Ball, murder, she knows, people were dying every episode. It was all about murder. Say that today. It was all about murder. Yeah. So, 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 you know, even if you look at some of the cartoons, some of the cartoons are very violent. Mm-hmm. So, so I hear you, but why is it such a huge difference now that that that's having such a large impact now? Is it to your point? Because we know more because of social media. Because we almost we found out now right away. There's no waiting six weeks or four to hit the newspaper. You found out right away when stuff happened. Well, I think Mr. Wayne made a good point. The parents where they are in these, yeah. where are they in these young men's life? And I think that is certainly a contributing factor. Is like just home life. Um, there's no guidance. There's no presence of telling you like what the consequences may be or how to handle a situation like that or deal with these type of emotions. And like, they just kind of ignore consequences or don't even really see it. Because I think a a lot of these kids, they kind of just glorify the idea of going out and doing these things. Like Devin said, it's in the music, but um, there's nobody letting them know like, man, you pull that trigger, you're impacting a number of people's lives. That family, of course, that has to deal with that grief. And then for yourself, you're throwing your life away, like not even giving yourself an opportunity to really grow and uh, kind of experience life. I think some of these young men um, and then you see it sometimes in the ladies, too, like they starting to get a little bit more violent. But um, I think that it's just a lack of having just a, a presence around letting you know right from wrong or how to, again, deal with emotions or people that you don't agree with. Um, they just automatically take it to that level of, I- I'm going to shoot you. It's crazy. They don't, people don't even but, fight no more. But, but, <laughs> that, that's the crazy. And, and, I, and I, no, I agree with everything you said, but it still takes, my question is, then where, how do we, where do we go wrong with parenting? You know, where do we get, where do we get be to your the point where, where and, and, and I agree with what everybody's saying. It's just, I'm trying to drill a little deeper. Mm-hmm. I have a whole bunch of theories, but I'll get to them later. But I ask these questions because I think these are questions we all should be asking. These are questions that before we get into banning TikTok and social media, you know, let's let's get to the root cause, you know. And if it is parent, you know, because, you know, one time I think about two years ago and people got upset. They were talking about passing laws. They were going to hold parents responsible for the things their kids. Have. They should. They should. Like, they should. And that's a, a question I was going to ask or just kind of toss out there is like, I mean, where do you think some of these kids are getting guns or weapons from? Um, of course, he yeah, probably have his out on the street, but then you fit, find or hear the stories where it's people just irresponsibly having weapons in the house, or they just kind of letting their kids but, do but, or have a free for all. But believe it or not, that's the minority. A lot of these guns are coming from the streets. Like for instance, there was a, there was an eighteen year old guy they arrested um, from in Sheltonham, mm-hmm. I think it was last year, who was running his very own gun ring, and he had his sixteen year old brother working for him. Crazy. He had a bunch of minors working for him. You know, and I forget where they were getting the guns from, but he was he had access to guns and they were putting them in the neighborhood. So but this goes back to, to how do we get to a point where is such is such lack of respect for life, not just their life, but human life in general. You know, how do we get to the point where because like you said, it's four layers to this thing. It's a you know, lot is of the person I mean I mean for for the actual crime is the person who commits the crime, the person who the crime is committed against. Is their family and the person who they come their family, mm-hmm. and, but when you they never think about that. Yeah. Well, even society as a whole. And I go back, you know, why do we? Have, why is it? And I know because of money, but why aren't we louder? Why aren't we more vocal about getting laws changed? You know, why are we more like, for instance, I, and and I know this is going to get me in trouble because somebody said, "Yeah, man, you know, um, it's it's just the evil spirit of violence." Now I agree to a certain extent, but also we it's a lack of us doing what we're supposed to do, whether it's parenting. Um, whether it's understanding that it's not parent is not happening and putting resources in school, mm-hmm. you know, in schools, you know, to develop that part of it, or or maybe we need, and I don't, maybe we do need tougher, not that it's enforced, because when I was growing up, it used to be you had to be eighteen years old to buy a certain record in a video game. I don't even know if they still enforce that now, you know. So so, how, you know, how do we get here, and what's some of the possible solutions? I, I, I feel like so many things have changed in society over time. Like I know you mentioned, you know, having 
older shows that did incorporate or have violence. But I, don't, I just feel like nowadays things are a lot more glorified when it comes to that. Again, Devin mentioned the point of music. And then I'm even just thinking about like TV shows, like uh, every show that come out now is about drugs. Mm-hmm. It's about, you know, what you got to do to get in power and get to the top. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I, I'm not sure how many shows were like that at that point in time. Like, you know, when you were growing up, kind of giving that Scarface vibe, but like now Scarface, <laughs> I know. I, yeah, I'm just saying like, yeah, Scarface, for no, sure, I mean, but I'm just saying now is you got BMF. You got power. Yeah. You got snowfall. You got all, all of top the boy. top boy. All well, of these shows that really kind of, yeah. in a way, it'd be like showing you how to do some of this I mean, stuff. It's a good point <laughs> because maybe we couldn't relate because there weren't a lot of black shows, mm. but there were shows like uh, Touchables with the mob and the mafia, and there were different shows you would see. But it wasn't a lot of people look like us in those things. So, but now so all the shows that look yeah, like yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. So that's, have that's those point. elements of but, just violence, drugs, sex. But see, the thing that troubles me is, and, and, and I'll flip it from another side, is is I get all that. But where are we as a society that we're that we're we're blind to it and we is we you know and we're deaf to it. You know, again, you talk about banning TikTok, but I don't hear anybody sitting down strategizing, you know, and not just coming up with a plan and and funding the funder plan is how we can start to tackle this stuff. That's the part I don't hear, but I don't even hear us demanding it, whether it's the church, whether it's grassroots organizations, you know, I don't hear anybody demanding. I don't hear anybody saying, yo, let's let's get to the meeting this week. Let's just, when can we start coming up with some funding and solutions? Because I agree with you, it's not happening at home. So why don't we bring people into schools and, and start teaching? It's a lot of I feel like with that, it's a lot of selfishness. Uh, cause people yeah. will say, Oh, it's that's not my child out there, or uh that's not my little cousin out there uh, doing that. So why do I have to worry? <laughs> For some of them, it is. But, 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 no, but this is what I say to them. This is what I say to them. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. A lot of those kids who got killed, who were good kids, you know, some of their parents probably thought the same thing. It doesn't have to be your kid, though, because mm-hmm. your kid's not the one pulling the trigger. So it's not about, well, it's not my kid. Our kids have to live in this world. Yeah. It's like when you were coming up. I, I I did the best I could to shield you, but I know I couldn't put a cocoon around you because you still got to go in the world. So even if you have this little circle of a few people, the rest of it is gaining. The rest mm-hmm. of it is growing. Mm-hmm. The rest of those same people multiply. At some point, you got to deal with them. You can't just, unless you want to go somewhere and nobody's ever going to leave the house and you will put up a six-foot fence with a moat and dogs and alligators. It, you can't separate yourself from what's happening in the world. Yeah. And I feel like there's a few comments that we got that have came in that I mm-hmm. wanted to kind of address and highlight. Uh, you know, just this. one just kind of speaking of uh, the immaturity of parents nowadays. Um, a lot of parents want to be your friend. Yeah. They want to be cool. They're not willing to have, you know, some of those tougher conversations. And um, I think uh, seeing, you know, a couple conversations that people have had with their kids, um, you're talking about college and goals and the future and painting this picture of possibilities um, where I think, you know, and a lot of our youth that find themselves in this situation, um, they don't see a way out. They don't see anything <clears throat> potentially where, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they have any other option other than to respond or act within how they are in that environment. Um, and I, I definitely think, uh, you know, that lack of maturity and having your parents or some type of figure to kind of give you some guidance is 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 killing our youth, like literally. Um, and then you got the point of like who is actually raising our kids? It's the television, it's YouTube, and YouTube, YouTube, and social media, which again TikTok and you Instagram. So it's like yeah, it's 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 a lot of different factors, and I think uh, layers to this situation that we're going through as a country. Um, but most of them, and, and and this is my, I got to push back a little bit only because I used to think the same thing. But I got kids in my, you know, some of the kids in the group I'm working in, you know, they're smart kids, you know, and, and they have jobs. The problem with it is they're followers. They, they're involved. They get involved in stuff and don't even know why they're involved in it. One cat was like, yo, well, you know, they don't like my friends. So what they got to do with you? But I mean, that still goes to the point. It's like, all right, who, who, who's your mom or dad? Who's that figure in your life? 
that is giving you some guidance or counsel. It don't matter how smart you are if you don't have somebody that is. No, but I said they're followers. In some cases, like they're easy to be a follower there, if you don't have somebody that's kind of. But giving there's you a couple thing. kids who have that. I'm, I'm I'm talking to these kids for some reason. They just being dumb. For some reason, they just they. To your point, they're being led by the people who don't have that at home. (laughs) But they just, for some reason, they feel like they got to follow them. You know, and I don't know if it's, well, I know part of it is, and we always have, we talk about this, this whole description of manhood has been so distorted. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, and respect is another thing which I hear. um, But they don't even have the true definition of respect. You know, once my man, well, they disrespect me because, because, you know, she asked me to take a hat off. So I said, okay, let's, let's break this down. You think that was disrespect, but you don't think it was disrespectful that you cussed her out? You don't think it was disrespectful that you called her all these names that you shouldn't have called her? Mm. So I said, not only were you disrespecting her, what do you think people think about you other than your peers when you're doing that? So you're disrespecting yourself more than the person just asked you to take your hat off. I mean, and that just made me think a little bit of just kind of maybe there is a a lack for self-accountability and self-love in so many ways, you know, to where... Um, you can't even look at you know what you're doing. You just kind of on the outside pointing fingers and blame it. But okay, let's let's let's, let's dig into the love part because I agree. Mm-hmm. But my my pushback on that is I is if you don't know what love is, what you do. It's like when I counsel couples, and I sit down. The first question I ask them, I give them both a pencil and piece of paper. Write down your definition of love. Somewhere between eighty five and ninety percent of the time, I get two totally different definitions. So, so if you don't, if your definition of love is different, what's the basis for love? What loving yourself look like? Because sometimes America says, you know, you're cocky. Yeah. You know, you're arrogant. Mm. You're conceited. You know, just because you do love yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think I use Jalen Hurts as a perfect example. You know, when they were going to the Super Bowl, he was the greatest leader. Everybody wants to follow him, man. You know, <laughs> and, and you know, he gave the quotes. Everybody was saying the quotes. A year later, they lose. Now the quotes don't mean anything. He's full of himself. You know, now he's not a quiet leader. He's his, his paycheck messed him up. He's conceded. He's t- so I'm saying that's how that's how thin that line is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, certainly. It, 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 I think uh, society doesn't necessarily make it easy no. for you to love on yourself. <laughs> but I think that's certainly a big key of why we see and find so many people lost. It's uh, funny because a lot Rick, of our youth, honestly. Ricky Waters used to be a running back for the Eagles. Mm-hmm. San Fran, he got to the Eagles pretty much at the end of his career. He was still good. And I remember they were having a losing season, and he was in a contract year. He was going over the middle, and he did the alligator arms. So they asked him in the press conference, like, what are you doing? He said, yo, dude, we're not going anywhere. He said, so he says, well, yeah, but you're supposed to play your hardest and sacrifice your body. He said, for who? For what? <laughs> but my whole point was, and back then that was a big deal. Now you see it all the time. No management in the NBA. <laughs> so, so, and he said, "I love me some me," and they they killed him because Yo, of that. Baby. I love me some me. So too. even yeah, with To, so 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 again, but so how? What's the balance there? Because most people, and I, I challenge adults who they don't know what love is. They think love is a feeling. Mm. You know, it's strictly a feeling, or strictly emotion. You know, and if you don't know what that looks like, how do you, how do you look? And I'm not defending. No, no, nah, actually, and that, I, I mean, that is actually a perplexing question to, to think about. You know, if, if you don't have that love at home, which, you know, somebody, <laughs> Mr. Wayne brought up that point, there's no love in the homes today. Um, how can you learn to, to love yourself? You know? And guy's right. They shouldn't have children. And it's like, how do you kind of figure out, you know, what that even looks like or feels like. One of the questions I ask, I ask the kids now on a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, is, is how much do you love yourself? And you'd be surprised how many kids don't say 10. Mm. Or when they say 10, don't know what that means. Because I'll quickly ask them, well, if you love yourself, why are you putting yourself in harm's way? If you love yourself, mm. why are you continuously keep making stupid decisions? And again, I think most of them have a strong infatuation with themselves. Some of them just don't care about themselves. Most of them don't know the definition. I guarantee you, I had a conversation with a young lady at work today, and she's divorced, and she was saying the same thing. You know, when she got married at 21, 22, she thought she knew what love was, but she didn't. So my thing is, if you don't know what it is, how do you love yourself? Yeah, and I, I that, again, you, you said something really 
kind of, I would say, provoking to me in terms of, uh, you know, kids not even necessarily knowing or understanding the difference between having love for yourself and just kind of being infatuated with yourself. And then the the idea of like, uh, you know, if you love yourself, man, why are you constantly putting yourself in harm's way? And I think, again, that's automatically a telltale sign right there to me that uh, people got it misconstrued on what it is to love themselves or they wouldn't be doing some of the things that they're doing. And and I think so. They will value their life and not be like, yeah, I'm going to take this chance of going to prison and getting locked up. Uh, Even though, again, that's another thing. I think part of it, too, is just kind of the glorification of some of those things. People think that, uh, like, prison is a box to kind of check off. You know what I mean? Well, these kids some respect. Well, they, these kids don't say that into their credit. They just don't fear. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't say like I used to be around people who thought it was credibility, but they don't have a fear of it. That's the scary part. Yeah. They don't have a fear. <laughs> they think, and I say think because they don't know because they're not there. They think that it's I, 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 I'm built for that, and they're not. Yeah. You you're not even built for for lunch detention. <clears throat> but so. That's part of the issue. Other part of the issue is, and I want to start, I do want to get into some solutions is, you know, are we the part of society that knows right and do right? Are we modeling the right thing before them? Mm. You know, have we written them off? You know, have we just accepted that this is a generation that's going to be cutthroat, going to kill each other, man, and we just go hoping to isolate them in whatever neighborhood they're in. They're not going to come to my neighborhood to your point. You know, have we done that? Because, you know, Wayne had a good point. You know, Chris, how do you get that love? I think you start showing people that love. And you start, I'm not saying you put yourself in harm's way. I mean, when I sit down and talk to these kids in the school, man, we have our conversations. You know, I don't go in there with predetermined, you know, decisions. you're going to jail. I don't go in my side. Start I, giving out I the stats. I listen to them. <laughs> and I think for some of them, that little act right there shows respect. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Because at least you're listening to it and you're not too busy. I was talking to a friend of mine and, you know, a, a pastor, he was saying, he said, and we were having this valid point. Sometimes we get so busy in church, we're about the kid who walked in taking off his baseball cap that we forget about him. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but we forget I, about I, him. I, and I think that kind of goes across and beyond yeah. church. I think that happens just. I, I just use that example. Yeah, I know. I was, but I was just yeah. saying, that's a great yeah. example. They're wearing a ski mask. Ugh. Yeah, it's like they automatically kind of write you off. And it's almost like they don't want to deal with you in some cases, you know? And I, I think that. Is another reason why our youth is so lost. But how? And I say this because I, there's some kids I'm working with, and their parents have threw their hands up and said, "Mom or dad, or, I can't deal with this anymore." So, the, to them, that was people who were supposed to love them. That was people who I'm just saying that that's when you're born into that situation. The anticipation is that your parents are going to love you. That's a big hurt piece. I'm not making excuses. The second part of it is now the rest of the adults in my life do the same thing. Mm. They cut me off when I do something, you know, and it, this is sad. But they don't correct me and tell me what I need to do right. They just cut me off. It goes back to the baseball cap analogy. Instead of saying that, yo, I'm just glad the brother came to church. If I work with him, he'll learn to take his hat off. That's all I'm consuming. You'll take your hat soon you walk in the door. You know, and, and, and we have to do a better job. And, I, and if I look at these youth, I'm talking to some of these youth. I was amazed how smart they are. You know, how some of them are, you know, they have goals. Mm-hmm. The decision making just doesn't line up. Like I'm talking to one dude and he got it all planned out. I'm, I'm, he's working somewhere, you know, single mom, gets his mom's car. He takes extra shifts when he can. But she's doing what she can for him. And they go to church. He's doing what she teaches for him. And, you know, he, he wants to be an engineer. Got all laid out and everything. However, yo, dude, these choices you're making right now don't add up to that. Mm. So that's the part where I think it gets confusing. It. Because there's another dude's a manager. He's a manager of the place in high school. So he ain't no dummy, but his choices are not lining up to, to what he wants out of life. He wants to be an electrician. He wants to have his own business, but his choices are not lining up. One thing that you said earlier uh, just kind of even, I guess, related to the idea of kids not fearing prison as much yeah, as they yeah. used to. Back no, in the day. Or cops. Or cops, yeah. Or dying. And I think those things are drastically different from, I think, when we were growing up a little bit. Like, uh, prison had some fear to it. You know, they used to do scare straight. They used to take you in there and, like, show you what you. Me. 
I know because now it's like you going in there. It's like, yo, that's my homie. Like, oh man, like yo, my uncle. Yeah, I, had, like, I, had, like, I had a group of kids in Camden two years. Long but I was just saying that to make that point. Of yeah, like, but I'm, it's, you know, it's not a, looked at the same. But I had a group of kids in Camden a couple of years ago when I was doing some work for the other organization, and um, going through some violent things, middle school kids. So I brought in these these soldiers, these ex soldiers who saw people die, thinking they would tell them about it. Man, these kids was like, yo, man, we've seen death before. They were laughing. <laughs> they were, they, yo, they weren't scared. I mean, do you think oh. that's a thing too? Is like kid, these kids are seeing a lot more. Well, go back to it. They're on the Chris, they on their phone just like you. I've seen people be more upset when dogs, animals get hit. Mm. These are human, and they just and, and so and I want to go back to this whole thing because I think we we don't really have enough time to dig into it, but this is really becoming an epidemic. Yeah. This this is not, and you know, this is not. You know, one of them things, man, is going to go by, it's going to pass, it's a fact, you know, when it's going to change because styles and stuff change. No, and when they explain to us what happened, you know, when, and I'm not going to go into details because this is secondhand information, but somebody was explaining to Chris and I at the barbershop yesterday because they had relatives who was close to the situation. It was because somebody laughed at somebody. <laughs> Which so, is so, yeah, crazy. So, 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 so Somebody right. goes up to school, shoots eight people, five thirty. And the thing that got me was broad daylight. Got out of the car and broad didn't care who saw them. So I think it's just getting so brazen and crazy, like broad daylight. If people is elderly kids, all types of people around, and it's like just no regard for life whatsoever. Wayne he says I didn't have both parents growing up. I was angry a lot of the time. I had to make yeah, I was joking about that the other day. Wayne, <laughs> I had to make the right choice to not follow people. And I think that goes back to the big, my biggest concern is that we have raised a generation of followers, that we have some of these kids. Because I was amazed when I started talking this. I thought I was going you know, to be talking to kids who are not doing well in school. You know what I mean? You know, a sense of hopelessness. You know, I thought that was going to be most of them. But it's not. They, if you sit down and talk to them, they'll tell you things they want to do. Mm. You know, I want to own my own business. You know, this is the most common answer that I get from them, which I, I think is great. I want to take care of my moms. You know, I want to be able to get my mom a house. I want to be able to move my family out to do so. So they have so the kids, you know, and that's not all of them, but so but I'm saying the kids I talk to, they keep making dumb decisions because they're still involved in this gang thing, they still don't mind, but they they have some some sort of a vision. Don't know what to call it. So so I'm amazed that like for instance, I guarantee you some some kids in that group that shot up the kids at Northeast, I bet they just went to, because they, they had went to divorce. The, the boys was going to something I gotta do. And and so is it the definition of manhood that contributes to it? Because you know, we talked about toxic masculinity and, and we talked about different things. Is that it? You know, because you know, that ties into the whole thing about you disrespecting me and I'm a man because I'm a man, I gotta do this. So is is that part of the problem? I think one thing you said that kind of just sticks out, yeah. just I guess I'm questioning is like, man, do do, do our youth have a vision? And what does that look like for them? Like, even the idea of saying, like, oh, yeah, I want to get my my mom a house and do this yeah. and that. Like, but by what means? What does that look like? Well, but that, that's the problem. Because even when I do workshop for adults, how many want to be successful? Everybody raise their hand. Mm -hmm. How many, you know, what does that mean? I want to be rich. How are you going to be rich? I don't know. So I get that from adults, too, though. I get that from adults, too. Who, or how many of you want to be happy? They're over there, you know, what does happiness mean? Everybody look at each other. Mm -hmm. Or they say stuff that really, well, I'm going to get a woman. No, you can't be dependent on some woman to, to create your happiness or something or somebody. So I agree with you 200%. So, but the thing is, how, and, you know, we go in the second half, almost, how do we turn the tide? You know, how do we begin to make a difference? Because I do have some theories, but, you know. Because we never, I guess we'll never understand how we got here. I think everybody said something that was some truth in it. Yeah, I mean, because it's just like even thinking about when you were growing up yeah. to to now. Like, was it? Do you feel like it was just as violent, like with youth and kids, and like uh, as it is today? Like, I, I, I gotta be taking it to that extreme. I, I gotta be careful what I say here, though. But part of it, <laughs> no, because people misconstrue what I say, and I gotta make sure I keep my clearances. Um, when I was growing up, you know. We knew there were going to be consequences for our bad choices. That was not a debate. Mm. It wasn't a debate. Whether you had a single mom, whether you had no mom, whoever your guardian was, the majority of people I knew knew and understood there were going to be consequences for the choices we made. 
whether it was in school, whether it was in a neighborhood, we knew that. Yeah. Now, then you make the choice, do you want to deal with the consequences? <clears throat> I feel like now there are there are no consequences. I feel like now, like I told them in one school, they call principal by his first name. You know, um, they, they have, I'm not going to call what it is because people know what I'm talking about. Kids walking around, whatever, doing whatever, you know. Um, Wait, that's what I, 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 we made well, that point well, well, lack of leadership. But in, in this, I, I'm, you know, I run after school programs. I got a school program where they say you can't suspend the kid, no matter what they do. Come on. So a kid mugged a staff member, we can't do anything. <laughs> A girl, a girl. So I'm just saying. So this is this contributes to it because you're saying now these kids can do whatever they want to do, and they get they get to stay in the program, no consequences. And then I feel like that kind of is a, a learned behavior right there that you kind of carry on to adulthood. Of course you do. Yeah, and I think maybe people are just kind of overlooking that. You know, and thinking like, oh, no, this is small or this is school or like, no, it's very much but, like a pattern. But scenes are always small. Yes. And like, it was funny because there's three takeaways I got from the barbershop yesterday. There were three takeaways I got from it. One, how when you get start talking about life and death, mm-hmm. how, how people change. The one dude wasn't saying anything. Remember, he was sitting there, they weren't saying a word. And then he started getting more information. You know, this generation doesn't do that. You know, in the ages it was different, but people, the more information people got, the more they got engaged in the conversation and, and, and it changed. Mm-hmm. You know, the second thing that came out of it was that, yo, that that we don't see enough of that, that that people of color get together and just have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Not, and because somebody brought it up, we're not talking about basketball, football, we ain't talking about women, we ain't complaining about our husbands, you know, wives or whatever they do. You know, we just having a general conversation about something relevant. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't see that these kids don't see those images. Because to your point, when you turn on TV, you the rappers fighting, they, they don't see it. But I think the third thing to me that really stood out to me in that conversation was that's the first time in a long time that I've been in a room and people were talking about generational impact. Yeah. That's, when, people were, when people were concerned about not just me now, but what's going to happen down the line. Mm. And our kids don't talk like that. They don't talk about, like, I know you know my parents knew this will be better for your kids than it was for you. I don't hear that. You know what? And, like, with you saying that, uh, I, I I think that is yeah. really prevalent in our community is the lack of thinking about generations in advance or, like, how it impacts the next generation or even, like, the people around you. Um because it, it just made me think the only thing we talk about is generational wealth. Yep. Don't even know how to get it. It's just a, a buzzword for people to say and try to chase but, and do. But you don't hear them talk about uh, breaking generational curses or building type of like uh, just family traditions and building those things generationally. Like we don't talk about uh, just, again, like how my decisions potentially could impact uh, Mackenzie, my but nephew, see, or kids, and, and for or me, like that. And, and also acknowledge that so many of these young parents join us. Yeah, I get it. You one hundred percent right. But here I go. Now this is me on the other side. I guess I'm taking his place today. You know, um, my issue is at what point do we stop identifying the problem and come up with solutions? Everything we're talking about, we just didn't talk about today. Everything we put down in the table has been floating around for a long time since you know since I've been this. But nothing's ever done. Yeah, I mean, like, I honestly like, don't feel like we it's talked about, about it. enough. We, yeah, but 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 it's talked about enough that about people, something can be done. Every election time it comes up, and no, somebody I mean, out there, you know, you mentioned this early uh, on. They talk about TikTok. Yeah, yeah. no, but we, I mean, we talk yeah, about all different yeah, but, kinds but, of things. But, but, but we drive them. My point is, we do, we drive. This, 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 we have these conversations. I've been in rooms where they talked about it. And, oh yeah, we want to get the fun, but they don't because we just let it go. Mm. We get so caught up. In, you got more people concerned if they kid gonna go to the prom, man. To, you know to, what they gonna wish to the prom? How much money I'm spending? Spending the college but tuition morning, for a prom, but more than graduation. Yeah. So so I, 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 no, he not graduating. He but, gotta go to summer. But school. I get back to what I'm. But but when do we start pushing the envelope? When do we start saying that you know enough is enough? You you know hey you politician you just ain't gonna come around every four years every two years. Yo, this is what we this is what I need to see. We need to see you at least trying to put forth some legislation that's going to help. You know I I mean I, I I'm not a fan of TikTok. Don't get me wrong. But I'm more concerned about the gun violence than I'm about TikTok. I would definitely say it's on uh, the politician, but I feel like it's on a lot of these people that also put that message out of uh, negativity and violence. 
one, they have to stop and also tell the truth. Uh, that's the one thing I like about, uh, you know, Wallow from Gillian Wallow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I like about him is uh, he has this series called uh, Story from Behind the Cell. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it is funny. But when you really read between the lines, like he's serious. talking some serious. But I'm okay. I think humor is good. I think everything shouldn't be, you know, because people don't get it. I he think tells them a reality. I did, but yeah, I think I think that's good. But my Person point is, is, we gotta stop saying politicians because we we've had this conversation and and we know a lot of them. I'm saying most of them. They're getting paid by the very people, so so they're not gonna until we put pressure on them because we just keep voting for. They're not gonna change. We've been waiting for politicians to change stuff for decades. It ain't, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. It is, but so my point is, when do we start putting pressure on them to see these changes? For instance, I say this all the time. School, most schools are just like prison. You walk in most of these schools now, dim it's lights, dull painted, dim lights, you got the metal detector, you got armed police, you got you know, bars on the window, they got to wear the uniform. There's no bright colors, nothing to stimulate them. But, no air condition or whatever the heat have, but you tell them to learn. Mm-hmm. And you tell them in the same breath, we care about you. But you don't. You just like mom and dad, if I got that kind of jacked up family. Mm-hmm. They say they care about me too, but yet I'm not getting dinner, I'm not getting lunch, I don't get money. So, I mean, those are things that, that, that we have to demand now and stop saying, you know, you know come on, man, you know, could you consider it? No, guess what? You're not getting my vote. Me and every person in my neighborhood, we ain't voting for you next time. So, I mean, like, to, to me, and just kind of hearing all of those things, it's definitely, it's on our community of course. to really impact and drive the change that we want to and need to it's, it's going to start there and it's like at, at, i mean but i guess at, at what point do enough of us feel is that important you know because even just thinking about the countless parents that you see on tv after their children have been taken by gun violence i mean yeah. it's been enough of them where they can come together and start to really push and make some change um or even on the other side of that if your child or somebody has but, committed a crime why is it not important enough for you to get because out there? And the really problem talk about is, it. a lot of them are trying, and I don't mean any disrespect, but it's a bunch of females. Mm-hmm. If 100 black females show up, get 100 black guys. That's a whole different ballgame. Mm-hmm. You get 100 black males to show up somewhere, that's a different ballgame. That's a whole different ballgame. Like, I'm working on something now, and, and I'm definitely going to give Gary a call and, and won't even participate. We're going to go into a school and we're going to have a with circles. You know, and in the circles, we're going to mix it up with adults and, and we're just going to rap with some of these young people. Mm-hmm. We're going to rap about, I got some questions, we're going to talk about life, we're going to talk about children's consequences. <clears throat> because we know, and everybody here agreed, lack of parity, lack of positive, we know all that. But how do we how do we change it? How do we at least give them some information to start considering something different? Because if you have no alternative information to go to, you want to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. There's no reason to change. And so my point is, and I'm at this my space now is, you know, I'm challenging people. I'm about to go to this convention, man. You know, and and it's gonna be a bunch of brothers. And I said it in, in my devotion. I don't know if you really, I know you said it and all, but yo, they we got we gotta stop gathering just for social gatherings and and disguising it. Or you know, we just we say we gather to take care of stuff, but we it's, it's a social gathering. That's all it is. Yeah. We go to these things, we hear a bunch of stuff, and we all go back home and do nothing. I think one thing that you said that a couple things out of that is one. Providing alternatives. Yeah, you have to. And then two, being <laughs> consistent. Like I think that is certainly an issue or a problem in our community. It's the the consistency. Yeah. It's hot for a second or a minute, and then it dies down and tapers off until it's the next problem. Well, think about it, Chris. How long ago did I have them enough for enough shows? Mm-hmm. And they and still, still they still relevant. Yeah, still, and it's probably more saying. relevant than it was when I came out with it. Yeah. Well, you were even born yet, Devin, or you was a little kid? He, he was a yeah, kid. But, but, but that's my point, and it's still relevant. So, but meantime, all these other things have changed. The mm-hmm. dropout rate has changed. Teen pregnancy has changed. Uh, uh, all this other stuff around society is changing, except this one thing. Mm-hmm. You know, every other social pathology is moving some direction or another. This one thing continues to be steady, and it mostly impacts our community. It mostly impacts our community. So at what point do we get angry enough to say enough is enough? At what point do we get to a point and say, you know what, man, I, I, we can't, we got to stop this. And I'm not saying go into the school and tackle people and break up fights. And I knew Gary's going to come through because he's been away before. But I'm talking about, yo, get off your dusty, rusty. Dusty stop complaining. Rusty. And I'm getting on everybody. And I, and I know people get upset. I'm tired of 
turning on YouTube and pastors preaching about the youth, the youth, the youth. You know, politicians, the youth, the youth, the youth. You all you here, but nobody's doing anything. If I get invited to one more workshop, I mean, the politicians do it. Just we have enough. a workshop. They talk Come about on. it just enough to get voted and get in office. And but we got. But when do we get angry, man? When do we get to a point where we say that? Yeah, because if you know what, that's another way you show your love for something. You want to show these kids you care. Get angry about the things that's taking them out. Yeah. You know, don't don't be sitting here saying, "Well, you know, we no." Get angry about some of the stuff that's taking. We're not in just like the situation about not doing with with being able to spend kids. For me, it's personal because we're teaching these little black boys early on in middle school and elementary school that there's no consequences. Right. You can do whatever you want to do, and because you're black, and because you come from an impoverished neighborhood, oh, no, it's it's okay. No, mm. it's not okay. So stupid I, is stupid no matter what zip codes you live in. It don't change. I'm hoping this doesn't take us too far off track, but uh, we got 10 minutes left, and I just had this. Kind of question and thought yeah. earlier. We're just looking at yeah, yeah, I got you, man. Some of the kids and violence. Like I said, there was a story of this thirteen-year-old kid shooting this man in the chest. Like, yeah, do you think at any point, like that, uh, I guess parents will start being held accountable for the actions of their kids? Well, it's funny because I'm gonna tell you what's weighing me on that. I used to be like, nah, because they're good parents out there. But the last young man for the mass shooting. You know, I forget where it was. The day of the mass shooting, that morning, he's sitting in the principal's office with the school psychologist, a social worker. That was that, both that, his, white, that white Yeah, family. both yeah. his parents. Both and they're talking about these pictures of death and stuff he's showing. And everybody thought that was okay. Mm-hmm. And his mom actually got his they mom got on TV. No, she blamed the dad. The dad bought him the gun. She, oh, just, she, she got to put it off. Man. But my whole point was, you saw the signs. So, yeah, in that case, you need to be held accountable. Mm. Or ignoring the signs. You yeah, know? but that's my point. So, but but the problem is we don't get angry, man. We get angry about the wrong stuff. More people get angry about the way Jalen Hurts played last year. But I think to the point that you made about like in schools where they not oh, like man. they they scared to punish these kids. I yeah. think the same thing is happening at home. Like these parents are either just I don't know if they scared to to punish the kids or they want to be the, the cool parent or just ignore it. Like, oh, not my child. I think it's, I think it's a combination of all those things. I do think, because I've had parents tell me there's nothing I can do. With. That's, you know, that's why I stopped coaching. I have parents tell me there's nothing I but, can do. With. You, I, and I'm, I'm talking about middle school kids. I ain't talking about high school six foot six. I'm talking about middle school kids. Which is crazy. I've changed kids' like attitudes and mindsets in my experience with coaching. You know what I mean? Like just hearing and seeing how they interact with their parents and then like just the changes, you know, actually taking the time to talk to them and explain things. You've been with me. Your mom has been with me. I've had guys I, I did workshops for in jail. We used to go in the Acme, and every time I went there and it was guy in shop, right? Yo, 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 I remember you. So you can. You, yeah. you can, but but you got to invest in people. In order to invest in people, you have to give your time. You got to make sacrifices. We want all this stuff to change, but we don't like, and, and I'm tired of people telling me, yo, we got to pray about it. Faith without works is dead, man. How many more of our kids going to die? While we over here having these, you know, little prayer meetings, whatever. There's no action. Yeah, we don't. You know, my thing is, we need to get, we do, we need to start going up like, I went to one, two, and I, I'm going to start starting some. I went to one two years ago. And when I went to um a charter school, public schools don't typically have it. They welcomed the kids back to school. It was like, it was like 50 black men out there. That, yeah. And, you know, in suits or whatever, just, just, when the kids, kids came up, in, like, you got to get back yeah. to that. And that's, yeah. that's no risk. We ain't telling you to get out there and tackle nobody first. Nobody. There's no risk. You know. Just, Are you just, saying the first day of school or all year? Yeah, the, I but, think it is. Well, I mean, like, you you can't so do it all year because it's kind of hard do to it in because people got and people fall off. So yeah. you know, and you don't but want. That's to, what happens in a lot of things. But that's why you gotta do it strategically because you don't want the kids seeing people fall off. Because now it's like I told you so. So my thing is, if I got a hundred guys to say, and I'm gonna do it. If I got a hundred guys to say, look, I'm, I'm with you. Like, my goal now is to get 100 guys to go because I'm doing stuff in Norristown, I'm doing stuff in Sheltonham, is just get 100 guys to say, yo, I'm ready. Whether I can come do a career day like we did at Career Cafe, mm-hmm. you know, or I'll go into a circle like Gary said, you know, just and, and be positive. You know, so there's different ways you can get involved. You may come the first day of school and say, I can be out there to greet the kids, but guess what? Maybe I can't. But check this out. Maybe during the school year, 100 guys walking around a building, just having a presence. Because a lot of these folks, some of these guys ain't seen that. Never yeah. know what that looked like. 
But or like the time, men or figure that they see is yeah, like what, a peer or somebody a couple years huge, older than them. Because and that's why kids are followers. How are you telling somebody grow up and be a man? We don't have a definition of a man. Is. Or, yeah. and I'm not, and, and I don't care at this point. You got people who don't look like us trying to tell people in our culture how to be a black man. It don't work. Uh, it do, I see where I'm at now where you'll be like, we'll be, like I, was, I was, we were joking, but I wasn't joking. Crazy. We were talking about, I got spanked. I got spanked. You know, and we were having a conversation. Minority was having a conversation about this, and my grandma used to send us to get our own switch. Mm-hmm. You know, you get the switch and they pull the green things off, and if you got one too small, you had to go back and get another. And somebody walked past like we were making it up. Oh, yeah, y'all had to walk up the hill to school and, and, and up the hill home. No, this is real life for some. So you don't even understand the culture. Mm-hmm. But you're responsible, young black boys. That's a whole nother issue, too. You didn't even see, they didn't even see fit to sell Martha King's Day. They didn't see the significance of Martha King's Day. But you're responsible for young black boys. That's part of the problem, man. We got and, and we stand by and watch it. We allow this to happen over and over and over and over again. Somebody sent me a snippet from a commercial, not some show, and I gotta find the show. Um, the mom walks in the barbershop with her son. She says, Yo, who's 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 diamond? So from all you looking at it, you think it's gonna be a fight. Yeah, no, you think yeah, yeah. you <laughs> think it's gonna be a fight. So everybody looking around like, yo. So he stands up and says, you know, and he says his real name. Can I help you? She said, I just, she said, oh, you, you the one that's going to teach my son how to box and take him down to the, she said, yeah. She said, I just came to thank you so much. Hmm. Oh. That's a commercial or a TV show? It's a TV show. It was just, <laughs> power. Yeah, oh, I thought that's what it was for. Tommy. You were just, just, just talking about but, but I'm, yeah, yeah, so, so, you know, and they had a positive <laughs> part on it. <laughs> somebody <laughs> sent it to me. I was like, yo, I didn't know it was power. I probably wouldn't watch it. No, I'm <laughs> yeah, but we need more people to say, yo, I'm there. We need more people to say, yo, I I, I want to get involved. I don't have to do this. And then the next scene, you had to work the on the block. But I have this conversation all the time. I don't have to do this. Uh, it's like I didn't have to go there and share my story about prostate cancer yesterday. Mm-hmm. But at some point, man, we got to be willing to invest in our community. At some point, we got to start investing in each other, in our kids, in our communities, in our schools. We have to. Instead of sitting here waiting and begging for someone else to come, we waiting for the let Martin Luther King, the next Malcolm X to come in. Or we think some politician is going to get in and be the great, the great dope and yeah. save everybody. No. Yeah. I mean, again, I think we kind of touched on it tonight. Yeah. I just feel like... Uh, our community is very misguided in a lot of ways. Our, our youth, uh, we definitely society as a whole. I mean, yeah. we're talking about our community because it impacts because it the impacts us. society as a whole, society yeah, as a whole, is, is definitely yeah. in general. I mean, I, I guess I say our community and our youth because it just it means it a lot might, more it, to it, me. It does to me too. When I when I hear people say stuff that impacts black boys, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, yo, because that's the same dude you're gonna be bum rushing to lock up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same guy you making all these excuses for when he's a little boy, he's gonna grow into a grown man, and now you wanna lock him up. And that's that's nobody talks about those things, you know, like this. like it's on purpose. <laughs> well, see, I, I, we gonna go over with this one because I do yeah. see. See, I'm I'm in my I got my conspiracies theories hat on. I do think it's on purpose. I think just the like lack when, of funding in the schools, the lack of programs, they don't give you. But that's all about. stuff that they. That's all stuff the government can control. Yeah. That that's ain't stuff that, yeah, that stuff. And then red you know, and stuff like that yep. impacts where the money people, and funding and people goes people control to. that. This ain't something like, you know, whether your kid is learning or not, but giving your kid the resources, that's controlled by uh-huh. people. Yeah. yeah. They know these schools don't have air conditioning. They know these schools dealing with asbestos. They know some of these schools got mold. But then you they see we send in trillions of dollars to Ukraine. And I'm not against, I told your mom this morning, I'm not against that at all. You know, but, but yo, we got people in this country, man, who, who, who need a leg up. Mm-hmm. Who just need a little bit of assistance, you know? And if you want to see poverty go down, put some money in education. Yeah, you, you know what's crazy? I mean, I hate kind of quoting this guy because he's clearly lost his mind. But Orlando Brown, <laughs> he made some good points. Like, why does America not look like Dubai or like uh, Russia and some of these other countries that they like pristine and they're always building these things? And we're supposed to be one of the greatest powers and have. All of this money and finance, but, but yeah, our communities, it's no, it's, it's no because money. this, because they don't we, want us to we, have it. Because we don't understand the true definition of freedom. Hmm. We think freedom means you have the right to do whatever you want to do. Freedom, yeah, you have the rights, but with those rights come responsibilities. Yeah. I was listening to something from Tupac. We have the right to do what I they allow la- us to I do. was laughing because I had this thing from Tupac. I was watching this thing from Tupac. I'm not a big Tupac fan, but this is crazy how. 
people like him were so far ahead of their time. He was kind of smart. And because he, he, he was he was crying. And it's because he was saying how, you know, he wasn't crying because of what people think. He was crying because he said it hurt. He said he was having this conversation because he had five thousand dollars in his pocket. You know, and he saw a homeless person. So he gave a homeless person a couple hundred dollars. So people were like, yo, why'd you do that? You know, you could just, he says, no, he says, first of all, I would feel so bad knowing I got $5,000 in my pocket and I'm giving dude a dollar. Mm-hmm. And then he, he, he said, and he was crying because he said, I don't understand because he wasn't picking on them. He says, yo, these people are earning money the right way. But you got people like Michael Jackson, you all these people who got five or six houses when you got people that don't have one house. Mm-hmm. And yeah. those people buy those people are buying your product or buying your record to support you. Yeah. And he was going to say and, and that but you know how long well that was, but the problem is we're still addressing those issues today. Yeah. You know, you you like we're gonna put more jobs out there. But if folk ain't educated, they can't get the jobs. So that's like the dumb everybody, oh we gotta create yeah, you creating jobs with folk ain't educated to get the jobs. Mm-hmm. So they gotta get the same jobs. And so I'm gonna get smashed for this, but they Walmart supermarkets. You can't say you wanna they're not even picking up trades. Because my point is if you wanna you wanna bend or you want something with twenty twos and you wanna live in a certain neighborhood, Walmart and ShopRite ain't gonna do that for you. So you need to get an education and it's not happening. And and the problem with this, I do think it's on purpose. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Without I do doubt, think we, he's on we, I, but we got to stop. We got to stop, man. I don't, I, you know, it's for me. I get passionate about it because, and, and I know this weekend I'm gonna get in trouble because I got a whole bunch of brothers that I'm be have access to this weekend, man. I got a captive board. Well, bring me because I, but I feel like I, I think, agree. Just like that barbershop when we when, when and we were in the barbershop having these conversations with those guys, right? You know, there wasn't nobody in there cursing. It wasn't nobody in there, you know. Bashing this about it was a positive conversation. Even when the camera was off and the tape, it was all positive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it was laughing. And we don't know the brother the other guy who had prostate cancer. You know, I've seen him do my entire life. Right. Yeah. Never, he bought his son, I bought my there. son. Yeah. But that's the whole fight. He had his son, I had my son. Mm-hmm. So so I think that's the stuff that that we got expo- like, you know, we got exposed to. Like I would love to have a session in the barbershop. Get some young boys that's in the barbershop. Let's cut it up. But I got dates for schools coming up. So anybody's interested, hit me up. I got y'all, but we we need to have a presence, man. I go, I'm doing basketball clinic at Pinnell. There ain't no men in there helping them out, man. You know, another thing he's talking about with the barbershop, it reminded me of this documentary that I can't think of the exact name or location. It was, but it's a it's a barber. He started a school and it's specifically aimed or targeted at young men to get them off the street. And get them a skill, yeah. and give them a trade, and like I mean, haircuts ain't going nowhere. We forever going to get and need some of those. Man, they get and people charging fifty bucks, right? It's, it's, it's fifty bucks a cut. I was talking about taking some classes yeah. the other day. After yeah, I know when you. I was like, yo, but but but, but that's classes. my point. You why not? Why not have that in a high school? I want the dollars, and so did Wayne. Why not offer that to kids? Okay, you in trouble. We trying to find your way. Let's learn the trade so you can hustle and get some money. Uh-huh. You know, let me teach you something. Why not bring that back? And it doesn't have to be a trade school. You can have a cosmetology class or bring a barber into a regular high school and say, we're going to do free haircuts once a month. But only get the free haircut. This is some of the stuff you got to do. You can do that. And I'm not, let me say, I'm not Joe Genius. So I know other people can think of this stuff. <laughs> it's not just me. I mean, we really just started that on the spot a little bit. So, you know, yeah. bring somebody in. You know, you got these lucrative. Chick Fil A makes so much money off this community. Yo, have a Chick Fil A one one day a month. Come in there, man, and, and teach these kids how to fill our job up. But teach I think these kids how to, to interview. To do the that. Said, we we don't make enough demands of uh, the people who come in and make money off our community and the politicians. I think we just kind of fall in line and allow for them to do whatever it is that they want to do. Like think yeah. about when. They were talking about building the Sixers Stadium downtown, which they still yeah. don't move forward with. But how that the Asian community came in Raleigh to put a halt or at least slow things down on that. Our community really doesn't do much of no. anything like that. So I think that well, Sharif said it yesterday. It's key. We'll have all these conversations in the barbershop, mm-hmm. but then we go out and don't vote. <laughs> or stuff happened right down the street from us. So, but I mean, we have to. And, and I know I'm going to be an agitator, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> we got to start making some noise, man. We got to start, yeah. you know, we got to start, man, raising cane. We got to start screaming from rooftop, from rooftops. We got to start advocating for our youth. You know what? I agree with people say all of them not going to come. But even if you get a third of them, that's a third of a next generation that you've impacted because their kids are going to be impacted. That's mm-hmm. what we got to start thinking. It didn't get like this in one day. It took time to get like this. It didn't get like this. 
I believe in spirits. So I said, but it's not their spirit. This is laziness on mankind because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. The spirit, people, you got four families out there. That ain't no spirit. That's you being trifling. <laughs> and you ain't going to pray it out of nobody. Nah. Some yeah. of these kids that I talk to, man, it's not a spirit. They don't know any different. You can't be what you don't know. And we, we come up with all these things. They honestly, some of these kids just don't know. Yeah. Because they hear the phrase, if I if I'm I'm a toxic masculinity mm-hmm. or, or 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 too much testosterone. I mean they but hear you know that, what? that makes you more susceptible to be a follower. I I'm I'm agreed. That's exactly like, what that's, I'm saying. Because if, but if we're not going to Chris, if we're not saying this is what you know, like I'm the, you know, I'm you know, I run out of school for I'm part of school for Canal and I'm doing basketball with them. This ain't about basketball. Because, I mean, frankly, I've never seen so many kids that, that couldn't play in one place one time in my entire life. Mm-hmm. That's a little sidebar. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I had to change my whole strategy because you know how. This is about teaching these guys about teamwork, about teaching these guys about not quitting, about teaching these guys to have confidence, man. And when stuff knock you down, this is how I'm going to respond. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't care if they never learn how to make layups, but understand passing the ball. Understand the strategy of drip, taking your time to dribble the ball, the patience of not just picking the ball up and running. Understand that when you get frustrated that, yo, I got to keep going, not quit. Understand that I shouldn't be making fun of my teammates because, you know, they did something worse than me. Understand that, yo, that I have to look out for somebody else. I've been on teams that weren't that good that we won tips. I've been on teams we were good and we sucked mm-hmm. because we never got to, because the teams that we were good, everybody knew they were good and nobody's willing to sacrifice their game. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be the point guard. Everybody wanted to be the shooting guard. Nobody wanted to be the rebound and the defender. <laughs> so, yeah, we were scoring a bunch of points. We were giving up a bunch of points. And people knew it. Mm-hmm. People knew if they made three passes, they were going to lay up against us. Because everybody's going to be trying to leak out and get a fast break. <laughs> Been on the team like that. Yeah, so, so, but we have to, as men, as black men, as African-American men, we, I, I, I beg you, I implore you, whatever you want to say, we have to find some way to get involved. We have to find some way to to, to, to get engaged with these kids. And I'm not saying it, everybody's not equipped to go into a school, but we can play a role. Mm-hmm. Like I was talking to a group of brothers. I said, you know what? Yo, do a video. Do a video. I said, you know what? For you, you not this close. We get in the classroom. Get, let's do a Zoom call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, well, you know, if I can, you know, I don't need you to preach. I don't need you to go on there and preach and anybody help. This is, not, this is about building a relationship because if you build a relationship, they will see those qualities and they will begin to pursue them for themselves. Mm-hmm. That's the name of the game. Whether it's church, whether it's business, you want to enhance people. You want to in- inspire people. You want to encourage people. You want to give them the tools to get it for themselves, not because of you. And that's not going to happen unless we get back in the trenches, man, unless we start getting involved, whether it's through coaching, whether it's through just being present. Yeah. And I think that's actually a great point, too, is there, there's so many ways to, to get involved and be a presence. You know, it doesn't have to be if, if going into school is not your thing, you don't got the time for that. Do something after school. And do yeah. something on a weekend. Gary made a coach about like, libraries. So many different things you could do. I don't know if you remember growing up, Gary. They had programs at the library. You could go to live and have a program, okay? Why don't a group of men get together and say, yo, we got 100 men. We're going to be at the library on Saturday. No risk. You ain't out there. Because ain't nobody going there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the problem. Just say, yo, we got 100 men, and we're going to show up at the library every Saturday. You know, I have this thing called the gathering. I think we need to Once take month. them to the library. No, but, but, yeah. but no, no, but see, you can't. You got to challenge, brother. See, that's the problem. You take people, and they fall off. You got. You want people that want to be there. If they don't come on their own, then that's when we okay. Used to do that's Saturday fine. Youth Alive. We would that's take fine. a bus and we would go pick those. Kids but you're up. talking about kids who that was different. You talking about I kids? I'm talking about kids who had no Oh, I, think, I was talking about adults. I know. I was talking about, about men. I was mm-hmm. talking, yeah. no, the men. We could get there. I'm talking yeah. about the kids. But, but you, you start with hundred men. You start with hundred men. Say, yo, all all you single moms out there that's looking for mentors, whatever, we gonna be at the library on the Saturday. We ain't taking your kid nowhere. We ain't going. Everybody's gonna be fully vetted. Everybody's going. And even if you bring your kid down, we gonna read to him. We got a hundred men. We gonna be the library on Saturday. Actually, we need to make them read. <laughs> no, but you gotta teach. You gotta. You gotta read. You gotta, no, a lot of a lot of kids don't read because they can't read. So you gotta make them comfortable. Empower them. You gotta make them comfortable by leading by example. Mm-hmm. But that and okay and I I just thought of that. Mm-hmm. I ain't in the room making ten. You know, two hundred thousand dollars. I just thought of that. That's stuff like that you can do. Yo, let's be, let's meet down library. All you single moms out there who you know who can't find mentors, whatever, meet us at the library. Just like the event we have at the Discovery Center every year. You know, I can't get people to, to come out there. And it's free. 
They come out there, the apparatus is free, they get free lunch, you know, we had to, and I, I can't get people to bring their kids out there. That's what I'm saying. You're but they'll complain. The no, but that's what I got <laughs> men. Men will show up, so I'm saying, no, you keep saying TikTok. I'm, I'm talking not, about the kids. I'm not talking about the kids. You start with men first and say, yo, we're going to be at the library every Saturday. You a single mom out there, you want to bring your kid, bring your kid down to the library. That's how you start. Yeah. I mean, I guess the point I mean, you just, yeah. you, you're. I guess we got to get more men to show up and see what happens. You do because personally, I think we got to get more on these uh, superintendents and these principals. Uh, stop treat to really invest in these kids. Stop treating them as more of a benchmark or a quota Ooh. to try to get more money for the school. If that makes sense. But see, but then again, that's much higher than the superintendents, and that comes from above. That Department of Education that says, "Hey, six percent of your kids, you know, can't fail." You know, not let's get help for the 60% of kids to make sure. And what happens is they get further and further behind. Mm-hmm. So superintendents and, and, and assistant superintendents and principals, you know, um, I don't know how much deal they have, but they just fall on the chain because their job's on the line. Yeah. Their job's on the line. So, again, it goes back. We have to start, you know, I think a lot of times we forget the people who make decisions and we beat up on the people that's right in front of us because it's convenient. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that comes to one people probably not really understanding and right. knowing like uh, checks and balances, like who's responsible for what. Um, and I think sometimes we get kind of lost in all the things that they put I in remember. front of us that kind of like uh, make you overlook. Like I think the one thing that stands out to me is like when we were, it's like the the big debate on on bathrooms. Like, oh my goodness, like, yeah, or yeah. we talking about TikTok. Like you said, I think we have more prevalent issues that they just kind of throw all these other things and divide because us in so it, many different directions where it's a bunch of grown people not impacted by the, by the, what we're talking about, yeah. the social value, talking about something that one of them is irritated about. And I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not a TikTok fan at all. But if I had to put a list of things up that I that we need to take care of, TikTok ain't talking about this. Nope. And even that is like a business thing because they talking about either it needs to be sold to a U.S. company, which means that it would still be running mm-hmm. in the manner in which it does. They just want control over it at the end of the day. So yeah, look how they cleaned up Facebook. I mean, and that no, too, no, no, no. like I mean, you still I, got Facebook, yeah. Instagram, Snapchat. All these I think, apps. And, and I know we got to close. We be all night. I just think we have to get back. There has to be a call back. Here. Mm-hmm. That's the point. We okay, put up. We politicians need to put money in the pot. You know, we need money because we need to be able to run some effective mentoring programs at libraries, at rec centers. You know, I go back to the Fisher Park basketball that we had. You know, and I, I still I got the picture over on the wall. I got it, and and I talk. I think about that all the time, man. And I, you probably don't. You were back and forth in school, but Chris was a part of. You know, yo, we, it took us what a week to put that together. It How many kids did we touch? And then we even had like the. Uh, I think. What was really special about that was how the community was yep. involved. You had people, fathers that were there, like they want to coach teams. Just to get a t-shirt. Uh, right. We, <laughs> we had people who was, quote unquote, like local drug dealers. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I wouldn't recommend that now, but we did. But you know, no, we but had to get his permission to use the car. But still, like, I mean, having him there. Yeah. And doing something positive for a period of time. Yep. Never had an incident to hold something. It, it meant everything. Never had an incident to hold something. Right. It yep. allowed for us to go smooth because now his attention isn't on doing the negative thing. He didn't miss a game. Doing. He didn't right. miss a game. He, he was there supporting day. the kids, yeah. like yeah. cheering them on. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I, I think like it, yeah. I, having the community involved in something. It can certainly like begin to bring us together in a way, and like well, we I think to, not writing people off like you, it turns us saying, yeah. "Well, we can't." We got to. Well, I wrote about that in my devotion today that we and, and and now I'm gonna pick on church people. We are quick to write people off. We're quick to write people off because they don't believe what we believe. Mm-hmm. We quick to write people off because they don't look like we think they should look. We're quick to write people off because they disagree with us, and it's not biblically based. And I talked about the day the story, you know, and Joshua rehab was a harlot. She was a hooker, whatever they call a hoe, whatever they were calling her day. Jezebel. And, and Joshua, Joshua, you know, you know, Joshua's spies was in the city and she hid them. And she hid them in their house. Now I'm saying because some of us church folk, we wouldn't have went in the house. Even though we know that's going with that. I ain't going in with her. You know, what she does. What does she do? She's one of them. You know, we do that to people instead of saying, yo, let me show this folk some love because that's going to touch this person's heart. Yeah. That'll help people change. These very kids, we, and we're not going to get all of them, but I'm t- I go and I sit down and I talk to them, and I, I, the first couple of weeks, it's only been a couple of weeks, I'm amazed because they look at me in the eye, they give me her and fat, you know, they're saying thank you. 
you know, I'm, and I'm like, and I'm, and even the person working, she said the same thing. We're looking like, wow, that's not what I anticipated. And I'm not saying everyone is going to be like that, but so far, so, and I know I'm not going to get all of them. If I can get a couple of them, you can start to stymie this and you can start to build up momentum. You can actually start a movement and not just a name only. Mm -hmm. See, we got to get past the stage of, and this is my pet peeve. We got to get past the stage. You say, oh, we had a thousand men show up. Well, what, did, what are you doing? Y'all showed up. You had a great conference. Y'all had a great time. Y'all talked about it. Then everybody went home and nothing changed. They just got everybody together. went they back got together, home. had a good time. I, mean, I can't events. wait the next year. Oh, yeah, I met that person. I met that person. Yeah, I can't wait the next year. But we go back to the same communities, the same poor education, the same divorce rate, the same job uh, rate, the same pregnancy rate, the same murder, murder rate. None of that changes, but we had a good time for whatever time we spent together. At what point do we get angry and say enough is enough? Yeah. At what point do we say, you know what, that's no longer acceptable? Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a, a good segue here for us yeah. to kind of move towards closing things out because I think it is at that point of like yeah. frustration of like, yeah, where is enough enough? And it really is on us as a community to come together and start kind of generating and demanding some change, um, whether that's from one, our politicians, the people that we put in these positions to kind of make some of these decisions. They challenge them. Yes. Man. We and challenge then, them. Uh, us as a community, like holding each other accountable and actually being there and being present and having communication and uh talking to the kids and like, the youth. If you out there, I would love to get Mary Show Park on this show. And the reason why I say it because People were giving her grief because she's talking about year-round school. She's talking about sitting after school, school programs one year-round. And there's things that need to go to make that work. But those same people have all these years to come up with, with um, solutions, and they haven't come up with none. Yeah. But yet you're attacking somebody who, whether you agree or disagree, at least are trying to come up with some solutions. So instead of you coming to the table and saying, well, hey, maybe that won't work, or maybe this will work, you just talking about that ain't going to work. That's crazy. Year-round school, how about we substitute some of that schooling with – Skills, but that's why you. Other, <laughs> but that's why other people have to come to the table because she's operating on a wheelhouse that she's comfortable that she has knowledge of. Yeah, so if I don't put other people around me, ain't been doing well. Yeah, but but see, Chris, that's why you got to have other people at the table because you know things that I don't know. You experience yeah. things that he don't know. You got to have other folk at the table. But you know what though? It, like, uh, so there's a documentary out there called "Shoot Basketball Is Not People." It's about a program yeah, yeah. here in Philadelphia yeah. uh, where they work with kids. Uh, in regards to giving basketball as a way out, you know, get them yeah. on the streets. And like one of the key points or issues that they were having though is they have such success, but they're going to government officials to get back in and support and they're not willing to do it. You know, so I, I think there are people that want to come to the table, yeah. Yeah. but it's like the people who are in those positions aren't walking, walking them. But what has to happen is, and that's what I'm talking about, if you've got a coalition on the why not get 300 black men to go down the city hall and make sure they support? We ain't going out in the street. Nobody actually you to get in the corner. Nobody actually you to push. Let's go. Well, let's let's get some buses and go down to Harrisburg and go and go and walk around the Capitol to different state senators office. You can do that. You can do that. They do it for daycare. They do it for education. We can do that. You can get buses of African American men to go down there and we're going to walk around Harrisburg and we're going to lock until something gets done. You can do that. You don't get. You ain't got to coach to your point. You ain't got to coach basketball. You don't have to get involved in the organization. But you can go down and support that organization through lobbying to get your your, pop, your local politics, whoever he or she is. Yeah. Those things we can do. And it, and it's one day you give up one day out of your busy, 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 busy life. <laughs> and I think uh, yeah, that comes to us holding each other accountable. I am. That's my new thing. My so, thing is I'm challenging everybody. So I do want to know me. You gonna be challenged. Thank you, guys. Shout out to. Light bright here. I see you on Parveen. Aloha. What's up? I'm assuming you're calling in from Hawaii or, or watching us. I wish I was there. Um, hey, can so we do a show from Hawaii? You, Mr. Gary, <laughs> thank you, you know, for, for tuning in and dropping your comments throughout the show. Certainly appreciate you guys. And uh, another great episode. I feel like we put out a lot of great ideas, had a conversation that needed to be had. But um, next week, it's us being about action. Yep. So, again, thank you all for tuning in to Above Average Black Man. Dev, drop your lines. Like, follow, subscribe, <laughs> share, comment. You interact with us. Yes. A square BM. Make sure you're out here empower, inspire, up with the community. Take care, everybody.